Welcome to Good Libations, which is our show about mixology. My name is Ethel Andrews. I, as you know, I'm a mixologist. And we're going to demonstrate a drink that actually was pretty much of a classic in its own right in the 1950s and 60s. And then it kind of fell out of favor like many of these type, type of drinks. And it began to be made, too, in a way that was less than, shall we say, stellar and interesting. And that's the good old daiquiri. And of course, you can make daiquiris as frozen daiquiris in large quantities for parties, just like you can make them uh, in the same style as, we'll say, a frozen margarita, using frozen limeade. And it makes a perfectly good drink with the addition of some fresh lime juice. But at any rate, we're actually going to demonstrate a traditional hand-shaken daiquiri the way they originally used to be made. And a lot of people don't know this, but a daiquiri does not just incorporate rum and lime juice and sugar, but many of them involve the use of maraschino liqueur. Not maraschino cherry juice, which is what this is, but maraschino liqueur. And also, in some of them, some orange curacao was used. But we're going to make them a little bit different today because I'm going to incorporate the use of blood orange in my um, daiquiri, fresh blood orange at that. But at any rate, we're going to set about making the drink, our traditional daiquiri, in the proper way that it should be made that is so much more interesting than the mediocrity that it has taken on in recent times. At any rate, we're going to use a shaker for this, and we're going to use a martini glass. But you could also use a pedestal glass for this drink. You could use a champagne flute glass, a dish-shaped champagne glass for it as well. And also, you could use other glasses that lend themselves to tropical drinks. But a daiquiri is traditionally a short drink rather than a tall one. And I think a martini glass sets off the beauty of it a bit better. At any rate, we're going to remove the top of the shaker, put some ice in it, and we're going to start squeezing the limes. And personally, I love key limes. That's why I'm incorporating them into this drink rather than a traditional lime because I love the flavor of a key lime. I think they are so much nicer than uh, a traditional lime. And of course, we have to use more of them than we would a traditional lime. But that's quite all right as far as I'm concerned. So I'm going to go ahead and, as I usually do, hand squeeze them. Because again, when you hand squeeze, you're getting the oils out of the peel as well as the juice. And sometimes these are a little recalcitrant and difficult to use, but I do like them better than a regular lime. And after all, in the Caribbean, which is purportedly where the influence for the daiquiri was, key limes are very common, as well as limes from other parts of the Caribbean, like Barbados limes and so forth. But at any rate, we're going to do a lot of squeezing of these little key limes. And hopefully I won't cut my finger in the process here. Because we want the daiquiri to be nicely flavored with lime juice. And also, very often I like to use my homemade simple syrup when I make drinks like a daiquiri. But I'm just going to use sugar in this one in the shaker, as I often do too. Because I actually like the granular characteristic of sugar and the fact that I think it adds a better flavor than simple syrup, which is kind of a semi-processed product, even when you make it yourself. And better not to buy commercial simple syrups, because many of them contain high fructose corn syrup, which, as you know, I consider to be the nadir of um, what we should be using in drinks. So a bit more squeezing and uh, a, bit, a bit of sugar. And then we're going to start shaking this nice traditional daiquiri, made as it should be. And again, this can be a bit laborious, but it's worth the extra effort because I think it makes an extraordinary drink rather than an ordinary one. And as a typical pattern, 
I tend to free pour my alcohol, but I'll be nice as I've been in recent times and I will actually measure the amount of rum that I put in just so you can see. But I'm going to use the um, cocktail shaker top as my uh, medium for measuring it and pouring it. It's just easier that way, I think. And boy, this is a tough little one right here. But the juice is being extracted nicely. And as you know, too, I generally will leave a spent shell in the shaker because that way you get more of the oils and the infusion of the oils when you're using fruit like this. And again, the different thing that I'm going to do with this daiquiri is add blood orange. And as you know, I love blood oranges. I've demonstrated drink making on other shows using blood oranges. And they are so different from a conventional orange. The beauty of the color that they add, plus the fact that they add a flavor that is a bit different from a conventional orange. I've used them in tropical drinks, as you know and in whiskey sours and other drinks. So here goes the blood orange. And I'm going to add a bit more of it just because. And again, this adds, I think, a more interesting dimension to a daiquiri, a better flavor. So now we're going to go ahead and add the rum. And like I said, I'll be kind. And I'll actually use the shaker top as a medium for measuring. It's like a jigger. Just a bit more. And then I'm going to add the sugar, which is important again. And like I said, I like to use regular sugar rather than using um, simple syrup. So now we're going to go ahead and shake this nice daiquiri here and get it going. And again, if you choose to make a frozen daiquiri, that is quite all right and that is quite good as well. And if you're having a party, making that in a large quantity is a lot easier if you use the frozen limeade. And again, not frozen daiquiri mix or margarita mix, but frozen limeade with the addition of regular limes. And again, you can see the beauty that the blood orange is going to actually impart to this drink. It gives it such a nice color. You got to divest that shaker there in its totality. And again, it's important to add a garnish to drinks because it adds a nice flourish to the drink. It adds to the beauty and people enjoy garnishes. And again, a garnish should be appropriate for the particular drink that we're making. So with this drink, what we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of lime and more than a wheel we're going to add about a quarter of a lime and this is how we're going to do it. You're just going to go ahead and squeeze it in, drop the spent shell and again because these are so tiny we're going to add another one, squeeze it in, drop it and we are going to add a little bit of a garnish of blood orange as well peel and all. And always remember the, you might say, advantage of hand squeezing because you're getting the oils as well as the juice. And that just makes the drink taste so much better because the oils add aromatics and complexity to the drink. And that's what we're after. Because again, if you take shortcuts and use mixes in making drinks like this, because you can buy commercial daiquiri mix Frankly, you're getting a dreadful, mediocre drink that has no interesting things about it, no nuances, and basically it's inferior. But at any rate, nice handshaken homemade daiquiri, which is what we were after. And as I always mention um, at the conclusion of my shows, always drink responsibly, show respect for our community, respect for other people, and show maturity about consumption of alcoholic beverages. And again, drink responsibly, enjoy yourself, and thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Good Libations. Once again, I'm Ethel Andrews, and I'm a mixologist. Thank you again, and enjoy. Goodbye. <laughs>